comes the sun, here comes the sun, and I say it's all right. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. And a hot Mick here. Yes. It's warm in here today. Hello. It is, it is warm. Hello. Double dessert Dan here today, actually. <laughs> Just, uh, this is our first show back after a brief break. And I uh, went to Italy where you'd have dinner, dessert, then go out for ice cream. <laughs> it's awesome. Nice. Sorry, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. <laughs> okay, we've, we've dived, dove. Divin. Mm. There's an interesting past participle. There are also some flies around today, which is really annoying. We've said this before, we're not disgusting. That Shwangrila, as it's now called, uh, is on a farm, so um, it's that particular time of year. They're happy, mm -hmm. the flies. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so It's if, been warm. Yeah. And seasonably warm. Yeah. Cool. Also, if you live in certain parts of the, the world, this is nothing to you. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> This is right. home. Acoustic guitars, acoustic guitars. We want to do, um, what happened? What happened? A couple of things happened. Dan said to me, do you know what? I really want a nice small body acoustic guitar. <laughs> and then Orange phoned up and said, we've got a new acoustic preamp coming out. Do you want to take a look at it? Yep. LR Bags got in touch uh, via Strings and Things in the UK and mm -hmm. said, we've got some new acoustic guitar pedals. Do you want to take a look at them? Yep. And the initial response for me was, ah, oh, God, we've got so much electric guitar stuff to do. I don't know if the TPS audience is going to enjoy an acoustic mm. show. And I thought, well, why not? Yeah. Dan, out of your last 25 gigs, how many of them have been acoustic? 25. <laughs> really? Uh, no, the Joey gig. Yeah. 24. Really? Literally. Literally. Me too. I play a lot of acoustic gigs because why? Because we're taking our sweet ass time getting our band together. That's why. Um, I. Oh no, sorry. I say that we have done some Tin Spirits gigs. Yeah, I was going to say. I, yeah, I think yeah, we've we done have, electric we gigs have. just recently. We, we have. For, for everyone um, going OCD about the size of my water bottle, I've got a more sensible water I've, bottle. I've, I've got your water bottle. I should have brought it in anyway. <laughs> the. Um, I was doing electric gigs three, four nights a week for a long time. And it just got to be too much with the family and with business and everything. So I've took it right back. 
and we kept uh, a regular acoustic gig. And then we started doing our thing. Um, the Tin Spirits, we don't play. We don't uh, play live when we're uh, writing an album. So, and that takes us forever. Um, so, yeah, until TPS Live starts doing our thing, the electric gigs are few and... Was it few and far on the ground? Is that the... Far between. Far between. Yeah. Thin on the ground. Anyway. All those reasons, organising five people to be in the same place at the All same time, stuff. the fact that venues don't want you to play as loud anymore. Mm. And actually, if, if, I'm, if I'm really honest... <laughs> not evidenced by what you might have just seen, <laughs> but two people or three people, two people playing and singing in harmony, simple songs, is gonna. It has an effect on a bar full of people that a loud kicking band just doesn't, and it's a different yeah. aesthetic, isn't it? That's why I do acoustic gigs, is because people like it, <laughs> and it's it can be an uncomfortable thing to admit sometimes, uh, because it sounds nice. Yeah, yeah, it's so funny because the show we're recording after this is the power driver into the high watts. If you imagine people were trying to get more out of their 100 watt high watts yeah. back in the 70s, you know? <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's a totally different thing. You know, the um, songs, acoustic guitars. The reason that I'm really interested in this is because I really struggled for a long time with my acoustic sound. You know, my acoustic guitar was okay, um, but I've been through so many different acoustic guitars. Um, but it, there's a real science to it and it's something that I really struggle with you've ended up and forgive me but you know um, Dan has an awesome duo and I hope he doesn't mind me mentioning called the Bipolar Bears Doug, had had an had awesome Dougie on drums Dan on um, acoustic guitar and so Dan's filling a lot of sonic space in that so you use like an electric guitar pedal board mm. you use a load of sounds you wouldn't normally associate with the acoustic guitar yeah. and we will get there and we were loud as well. Yeah. We weren't sat in the corner of a pub. It was it was a loud thing. So volume issues with acoustic guitars and trying to retain the sound of an acoustic. But my biggest struggle was to have the sound of this in those. Okay. That's well, it. What a That's great, the, what a great place to start. We will get there, right? So this is going to be at least two episodes. We're going to film them back to back today just to see how it flows and how it goes. And we will put them out on concurrent weeks. So... Um, there's no no waiting two years for part two, which we've done for other things. Part one is going to be... <laughs> part one's going to be... Clean sounds. <laughs> what was that? What was the first one? Wild pedal. And the second one? Clean sounds. Clean sounds, yeah, yeah. Two two shows that we should have done uh, part twos on. So we're going to deal... We're going to start from the very basics. And Dan, you just hit the nail on the head. I've, I feel the pain of everybody out there, right? Because this is a beautiful thing. This is a Martin Tripolo... Uh, 18E. It's Martin's um, uh, standard series. It has nitrocellulose lacquer. It has all so solid woods. It is a beautiful guitar. And to put ourselves in the mindset of what an acoustic guitar sounds like, we recorded some mic'd up acoustics before, which you can hear now.
Awesome. Back in the room. Back in the room. I don't need to use any adjectives. What you heard is three acoustic guitars, three very different acoustic guitars. Um, Martin 0018E, Martin OMC 28E, and Colin CJ35. Three very different guitars, all do very different jobs. All very high-end guitars, mm. you know, really lovely acoustic guitars. Um, I have no sense of humor about acoustic guitars, Dan. Okay. Uh, electric guitars, I have a sense of humour. Okay. I can play Squire Strats, I can play Dan Electros, I can play, you know, guitars that are funky and mm. acoustic guitars. The, it's got to be right. Yeah. So you have a... The, so re, the first thing that I found really interesting doing that thing with you just then is that certainly from where I was sat with the guitars, um, they all sounded vastly different to me. But you have that thing where you've got, you've, you've obviously worked hard at the acoustic thing and you really have a, a, an acoustic sound in your fingers, if that makes sense. Me, I've done but, a lot of acoustic recording. Yeah, okay. And the and dis so there's a, there's there discipline go. that comes from right. that, I think, okay. about that whole kind of, um, anyway. But no, that's important because I think a, a big part of that is understanding that the acoustic guitar is not an electric guitar. Oh, and you need to approach me. them completely differently. Oh my goodness me. And that's probably where we come in because for a lot of people, not for everybody, for a lot of people, the acoustic guitar is that thing that sits in the corner of the room mm. that a couple of beers is very night, cool. gets out when the friends come over and go, Can you can you play some Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And fair enough, you know, if you if you're of our generation and you grew up um you could, you know, think about the mid, early mid '80s. You couldn't get arrested with an acoustic guitar. Yeah. After the folk boom of the late '60s died, and folk during the '70s, um, Yamaha DX7 comes along, pop music comes along. Ah. Yeah. I, I, sorry, brief tangent. Talking to Chris Martin, the geezer who owns that company, about this. S sorry. Chris Martin as actually as in Martin Guitars. Is yeah. he the, the great grandson or uh, yeah, he's fifth, sixth generation, I don't know. Chris wow, Martin. Wow, that's so cool. Um CF Martin. And he, you know, he says Martin was was you know, in a difficult place in the mid eighties. Really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Really in, wow. a, in a tough place. Because no you know, the synthesizer came along, nobody wanted acoustic guitars, they were deeply uncool. Right. Eric Clapton comes along, 1992 or whenever it was. Oh, yes, unplugged. that unplugged album. And, and even Chris Martin says this, it totally reinvigorated the whole of the acoustic market wow. and it turned Martin from being, you know, a, a company that was in a, in a difficult position. Now they build 120,000 guitars a year. Acoustic guitar is not uncool. 
And for anyone who knows this already, I'm not. I'm preaching to the converted. But there are a lot of people that think, ah, you know, acoustic. Mm. Let's get that out of the way. So you've got a nice guitar. Mm. You've just heard what it sounds like. Great. You rehearse up your songs. Everything's brilliant. Oh, this is really nice. Sounds really sweet. You get to a gig or an open mic night or something like that. You plug it into the PA and all the, all the problems start. Here are the problems, Dan. Let me give you this cable. This guitar is fitted with a pretty good pickup system. It's an LR Bags Lyric. And the Lyric has an under saddle transducer under here. And underneath the bridge, it has a thing that sticks on that is actually an internal microphone. Right. And as modern pickup systems go, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. What I wish we had here today, which we don't, and I was trying to find one all week, but I don't own one, is a run-of-the-mill standard mid-90s Takamini or you know anything. I mean, Gibson, doesn't mm. matter, Epiphone, mm. with a standard cheap, uh, I'm going to say Piezo. If you're watching in America, you will say Paizo. Oh, really? What do you say? Pizza. <laughs> Pizza. I just come back from Italy, so that's whatever. What I'm, that's what I say now. Piezo Electric. Okay. Uh, pickup. So, so we are dealing with quite a nice pickup here, but I've got. Mm, uh, I accidentally bought us a PA system, Dan. Oh, brilliant! So you've heard that lovely sound. So of, with now and I. Yeah. <laughs> I just slipped it in there. Um, you've heard the lovely sound of the acoustic guitar, and if you, if you want to just re-reference that, rewind the video, go and watch that again now. You get to the gig, you've got a 25 second line check, you're about to sing your song, and the sound engineer goes, okay, what do you want then? That sounds great. Actually, doesn't sound bad. That does it? sounds great. I think I think we. <laughs> I was hoping it was going to sound a bit worse than that. So just to explain the routing we've got going on today, uh, these PA speakers have got a direct feed into the into the recording machine, um, so that you're hearing a direct feed from the PA speakers. That actually sounds pretty good. How much of the mic have you got dialed in there? I think nearly all of it. I think. So dial it all the way to the under saddle. That's the sound. Give us a bit that of that. Right, that's Actually, that sound. To be fair, that sounds that sounds not terrible. It doesn't sound terrible. And it's just to explain what happened there. Inside here, on this pickup system here, which I have to say is the first time I've actually sat and played one for more than a minute or so, mm. I think that's one of the best acoustic guitar pickups I've ever heard. Yeah, I have to agree with you. That, but, the, sorry, just to the, finish yeah, that. Yes. It has, as I said before, it's got an under saddle here, but it's also got a microphone inside. And what Dan did, is he started off playing when we thought it sounded great with pretty much all of the microphone dialed on and then he went to the under saddle pickup yep. only. That's right, so there's no mic there anymore. But if I take sec that sound. Now that's all mic. You hear the body. Ah, oh, wow.
just a little bit of that, of the pizza pie in there. Not even that much. Man, that sounds great. It's really good. And it's, um, we, we've got a few, couple things working in our favor. We've got really, really lovely speakers. These are EV, 1500 watt, very nice. And we're staking PA speakers. Yeah, Okay. we bought by mistake. Um, and, and that's great. We've got a really lovely guitar and we've got a really, really lovely pickup system. But you- So you're saying having good stuff makes a difference? I think it does from the beginning. Right. But even so, even, even in a really nice guitar, that under saddle piezo sound mm. certainly has its place. And the, the bonkers thing about it is it is the sound of acoustic guitar, plugged in acoustic guitar, that you know. Yeah. Because everything you've heard, every live record you've heard. Is that? Is, is that. Steve yeah, Earle yeah. is a, there's a fantastic Steve Earle live album, and I think it might be live from Montreux, and it was coming off the back of the Revolution Starts Now record. Mm. And he's got this, I mean, I don't know without looking at the, um, without looking at the footage, I'm guessing it's before he kind of decided he hated Henry Juskovitz. Right. And he, I, to me, it sounds like a Gibson because Gibsons all sound kind of similar with that under saddle pickup. Mm. And I know acoustic guitar players who would listen to that and just not be able to listen to it. Simon is yeah. not a fan of the under saddle sound, are you, Simon? Mm. No. Simon even hates new strings. <laughs> so, but, 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 so let's, let's defend it and say that it's extremely effective yep. because you get fast attack, quick response, loads of bottom end. Daniel. I went to see a band called Transatlantic a few years ago and the singer keyboard player, a guy called Neil Morse, played acoustic guitar for like one song and he plugged it in and it's the best live acoustic guitar sound I've ever heard. And after the gig, I said to him, what was that? He says, oh, I was just under saddle straight to a DI, to the desk, nothing, not a sausage from, and it's passive, to the DI to the desk and they just EQ'd it at the desk and it was Incredible. Now, I, now I, I've i tried for years to get a decent sound from that. I think that's a really interesting point of discussion because, you know, most of us who go and do acoustic gigs will... You don't want to... We'll come on to this, some of this stuff. You don't want to buy a preamp. You don't want to buy an acoustic amplifier. You don't want to do anything because it's they're all reluctant purchases. Mm. What we want is pedals and we want really lovely guitars and we want really lovely guitar amps. What we don't want is utility gear. Yeah, 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 Nobody yeah, wants yeah, to yeah. buy a utility piece of equipment. And I think that's why, I mean, open mic nights are just, I've done my share of open mic nights and some of them have been fantastic and some mm. of them have been so dreadful because nervousness of performer. Okay. No confidence with, how do I understand this EQ? How do I make this guitar sound good? Sound engineer, most of the time, you know, good on it, awake. Mm -hmm. Some of the time, literally couldn't care less. Yeah, yeah. And therefore, you give them, you, what you risk is you give them your sound and you go, oh yeah, yeah, the, the, the sound person will sort that out. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. And there, He'll you know, know how to notch the frequencies out to give me feedback and that's it. Yeah, texting yeah, their yeah. girlfriend or boyfriend because things aren't good. <laughs> Annoyed because the guy putting the night on hasn't paid them. And, it, and it, so I got bored of that pretty quickly. Mm. And just, oh, really, just as a matter for comparison, this pickup in this guitar is very different from the one in Dan's guitar. This is a totally passive. LR bags, uh, LR bags, LR bags in that um, K and K pure mini. So it has no battery. It has nothing. Yeah, and it's not. It doesn't sit under the saddle either. There's two little transducers. It's glued to the bottom of yeah. the bridge, yeah. and it sounds great if you do the right thing to it. Here's what it sounds like straight into a PA. Or even so, it's twice as loud as that one already. Right, and yet. You can still hear this, yeah. But how bad does that sound? Do 
<laughs> okay. It needs some EQ shaping, but I can still hear the guitar in that. Yeah, and the, you know that. But the, the EQ is all over the shop. It needs work. It needs work. It needs some yeah. work, and that's what I'm going to come on to. So, for everyone out there going right, I just want to plug my acoustic guitar, give the cable to the sound engineer, and they can sort it out. Mm. I can't live with that. Right. I'd rather give them something that is that I'm happy with. Mm. Because if I'm hearing that back through my wedges... Yeah, of course. If there even are wedges... Because <laughs> what else What else are you giving up by just giving your a cable to the, the sound engineer? You're also mm. giving up... You're giving up any control over the tone of it. And you can try the balance between... Can you the, hear it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do they care? And don't get me wrong, you know, if you're playing the Royal Albert Hall or some really nice venue, the chances are the PA is going to be fantastic. The mm. sound engineer is going to be fantastic. The monitoring is going to blow your mind it's going to sound so good and they're going to be really conscientious in getting it right. But that is the not... the dog and duck, yeah. it might be a slightly different experience. It's not the experience of, of most of us most of the time. So before we move on to acoustic amps, we are going to come back to talk about acoustic preamps and pedals mm. in part two and we will do this in more detail but just before we get there Daniel if you wouldn't mind so in fact actually no could you play would you mind playing my guitar seeing as we decide I can do that sir we, deci you? <laughs> we decided that you know it was pretty ordinary sounding without any without any treatment um, okay, little cut there. What I've done, I've rooted down through these LR Bags pedals, which are new. Um, they're called the Align series, and because they're acoustic, they have to be brown, <laughs> except this one, which is slightly grey, uh, and I am wearing a brown t-shirt. <laughs> I'm wearing grey. Yeah. There we go. Well, We're matching the pedal board. You failed, because... <laughs> in the acoustic world it has to be brown oh, okay right fair enough it has to be brown for some reason um okay so let's go back to where we were uh give us a give us a play <laughs> So as we said, it doesn't sound bad, but it does sound... Yeah, if that's all you're hearing through the PA, you'd be disappointed. Yeah, yeah. might sit in a band mix really well. Mm -hmm. It's the other thing to say about undersaddle uh, piezo pickups. They can sit in yeah, bands yeah. really well. Mm. So, right. A line series session. This is a preamp, and it's also... So what uh, LR Bags say about it is that it's trying to recreate some of the things that happen when you go into a studio and record. Mm -hmm. So you get a bit of gain, you get a bit of compression, you get a bit of stuff. Okay. Play the guitar, don't you? Are you are you any happier? That that's done it. Look, on, keep playing. It's fantastic. <laughs> so you might just say all it's done is it's added a load of bottom ending, but it's mm. actually doing some more stuff than that. I'm just going to show you two things super briefly on here because okay. we are going to come in back and do these in more detail in part two. Um, the saturate control. What's the last thing you want on acoustic guitar? Well, the last thing I mean, I want distortion and fuzz, but generally distortion and fuzz. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, man. We're good. So kind of nasty, but actually, when you dial it back and you just get a little bit of it, what you're getting there is just a kind of bit of preamp push. Right. <laughs> That's very cool. It's like um, it's like when you're pushing a desk a little bit. Exactly. Yeah, that. yeah. Well, that, right. that's um, a chord, Okay, so we are going to come back to this and look at it in more detail. The other thing is a bit of compression. This takes three bands of EQ and it compresses them in key places for the acoustic guitar. Apparently, here's with none of it. Okay, very cool. Are you ever going to turn up and give the sound guy or girl your cable ever again? No. <laughs> would be. No, well, why would you when you could have that? And yeah. that's just one option in all of these in all of these worlds. Let's um so just a quick look at this. This is new from Orange. Um similar thing, acoustic guitar preamp. Uh, masters to zero. Give us, give us some schwang down. Coming through there. And then, so that was the inbuilt reverb that you heard, and this has this heat control, which is, it's got a valve in it on channel A. Oh, okay. We've got fans in the older uh, speakers, so that will annoy the hell out of me when I'm doing the uh, audio edit, but there we are. Um, Here's the heat control. Phase. Phase between what? Keep playing. So, okay, so you've got, especially with the acoustic guitar, if you imagine the front of the acoustic guitar as the speaker, and then you've got the speakers behind you. And so the acoustic guitar ooh, itself, ooh, ooh. Ooh, uh, yeah, yeah. And then, because normally, so it's a relative phase. I'm gonna turn these off because we don't need them for a bit. Okay. And that's gonna annoy me. Can't defeat the fans, even in the uh, little bit of digital dsp -ery on the back. Really? No. Interesting. Um, so what the phase is really good for is getting rid of feedback, having with feedback problems. Because if you've got, if this is in phase with that, it can start being a bit Hendrixy on acoustic. Oh, I'm going to show you something amazing in a minute <laughs> awesome. about that. Okay. Um, yeah, that's one use for phase, definitely. Mm. The other is it, it, it seems to affect, phase seems to affect acoustic guitars much more than electric guitars in on a single source. Mm. And I don't really know why. One phase seems to work and the other one works less in a and in a particular room. Normally, you'd think of phase if you're mixing two channels, so if you were mixing channel A and B of that, or... But it might be that this pickups phase is different from that preamps phase, is different from the phase input on that... Yeah, on but the that's... Desk. With a single source, you know, that stuff is, you know, 
fairly relative. I think a lot of it's got to do with the way that the guitar is interacting with the PA because it's yeah, it's so much more. Um, That, the word is gone, Michael. I'm, I'm swimming. I'm drowning. It, yeah, yeah. Interactive. That, interactive is a word that we can use. Reactive. Um, it's so much more reactive. Um, so, and when you, you know, if you think about the, the way phase relationship cancels, you know, if you, if you swap things that are exactly out of phase, you will get nothing, mm. right? And because, um, yeah, this is so much more reactive to what's coming out of that. If you swap the phase, then what's happening is you're, you're not swapping the phase of here, you're swapping the phase of what comes out here. Yeah, yeah. And then, so the guitar isn't going to interact with the speaker in the same way. It's an, I, I'm, I'm just seeing more and more, especially on acoustic stuff, a phase button for mm -hmm. that very reason. Yeah, yeah. And quite often you can spend 10 minutes going, oh, this doesn't quite sound right. I'm, I'm tweaking my EQ, which we'll get onto. And it still doesn't quite sound right. You hit the phase. Hit the phase uh, button. It's like, oh, there we yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. Happy days. Mm. Happy days. Okay. Um, was going to get into a bit of EQ stuff, but let's do that maybe in part two. Because we've also, yeah, we've got some other, you know, I want to look at delays and things. We've also got the T-Rex Soulmate yeah. that we want to have a look at, which is... So let's definitely do that in part two. Okay. Right. So we've, we've kind of said... Is that some giant farm machinery outside? I hope it's a combine. Have you ever have you stood up close to a combine harvester? Um, I was at the pub a few weeks ago. I think that might be the combine. And this dude turned up at the pub in a combine harvester. Awesome! I it hope he has four pints. The best no, thing. <laughs> it was amazing. Turned up, parked it, took up seventeen car parks in the car park, just got out, walked into the pub. Just brilliant. To anyone who lives in a city, uh, a combine harvester is the thing that makes your shredded wheat. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> you, it, it goes in a field. Some guy who you can't understand drives it and out the back comes shredded wheat. Isn't it? It is. Um, okay, so we've said acoustic guitars sound lovely. Wells was a big fan. Yes. <laughs> of both acoustics and combine harvesters. First ever big, proper big gig I did to more than a couple of thousand people was with the Wurzels. No way! As a support band when I was 14 years old. Wow. Yeah. And uh, the singer, Pete, I forget his name, he gave me some sagely advice. He asked me if I was nervous on stage. He said, you nervous, son? I was like, uh, yes, Mr. Wurzel, I am. And uh, he said, I've got some advice for you. I was like, scrumpy Jack. Oh, he said, you know what? Him. <laughs> true story. You might have to bleep that, Simon. Absolutely true story. Ah, oh, that's brilliant. I took it to heart. Um, right, we've said acoustic guitars sound lovely. Um, and depending on the quality of the pickup in your guitar, and I, 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 it's remiss, we should have brought a cheapo. Yeah, because the, the, the quality quid. between um, piezos yeah. is... It, 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 it changes radically between manufacturer and manufacturer, like normal pickups do. Let's just say that if you have a um, you know mid-price Epiphone or Sigma or something like that, and it has a standard piezo pickup in it, this stuff becomes ten times more relevant yeah, 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 at yeah, that yeah. point yep. because you've got more of a fixing job to do. Yep. Um, and by the way, um, quick tangent on pickups. Some will say, why haven't you used a sound hole pickup or a different kind of pickup? Acoustic guitar pickups come in a, very, a variety of different kinds. The, by far the most common is a piezo electric strip that sits underneath the bridge in between the bit of saddle material here and the bridge thing itself. It sits in there. That's a piezo pickup. It's an electromagnetic transducer is what it is. Um, if you move forward from there, you then get in microphone type pickups. Mm -hmm which will, uh, a microphone, a physical microphone that sits inside the guitar. You can get um, other kinds of transducer that sit in different places. So for example, the one in this guitar um, glues to the bottom of the bridge on the inside. So there's mm -hmm. nothing in between the saddle and the, the bridge, which a lot of people adverse, feels adversely affects the tone. There are sound hole pickups. Sound hole pickups and they're still magnetic. Yeah. Acoustic pickups. Yeah. yeah. Um, not a big fan of those personally. No. They sound great down here mm -hmm. and they can sound really lovely, warm and natural. The minute you get past the seventh fret, it sounds like an electric guitar right. to me. Yeah. But 
lots of people use them and love them and love them dearly. And then you can get mixes of all of the above. So, mm. for example, that sound hole pickup might also have a mic in it. Or on here, uh, on the Martins, on these particular Martins, you've got a, a bridge transducer, and then inside you've got that Lyric pickup, which we spoke about, which mm -hmm. is a microphone. Back in the old days, you'd have this little thing that you'd stick on here with a bit of sticky stuff. Yeah, I remember the bug, those. Yeah. Which, again, was just a... a and loads of, loads of lap steel players still use bugs, still like them. Banjo players. Yeah. It's a, it's a thing. So there are lots of different types of pickups, and they do require different types of um, amplification, different types of gain levels and all of that. But by far the most common are the ones we're dealing with mm -hmm. today. What's in your guitar? Uh, it's just a pizza pie. Do you use anything, Simon? Microphone. <laughs> yes. Actually, that's a really good point. Simon says he likes to mic. And, of course... The best sound possible is if you were to be able to mic your guitar. But in the melee of a, a live band or on most stages, you know, most sound engineers will literally laugh at you if you mm. ask for a microphone on your guitar. Um, the better the venues, the more experienced they are, all the rest of it. Well, they never laughed at Johnny Cash. <laughs> and, you know, they, what, what might they do? Get an SM57 and sort of wave it at, yeah, 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 generally at the sound hole. Mm. And you're almost in even more trouble than you are just giving them that. Yeah. When you think back to that era, like Everly Brothers and stuff, and you see them playing, and then they pick up and do that. And that was, you know, if they weren't singing and they wanted to boost the sound of the guitar, they'd literally pick it up and play it into the microphone. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the bluegrass, um, the, still the, the standard bluegrass way of doing things is to crowd around a really lovely condenser mic. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. The, the fiddle player steps forward, and then he steps back, and the guitar player steps forward, and then... She steps back. Sorry, I said he, so I should say see, she. Uh, or even if they don't identify as any gender, <laughs> hen. Hen steps forward and hen steps back. Um, did you know that is the right term? Hen? Yeah. It, it's, instead of saying he or she, you say hen. Really? I learned that from the bridge, the uh, Scandinavian um, noir kind of uh, murder thing. Are you sure that's not been lost in translation? Nope, it's true. I looked it up on Wikipedia. I was oh, okay. so interested. Okay, there we go. God. Any more tangents? Um, I'm just, we'll have a few. Yeah, around the house. Okay, so, so... So, sorry, we finally got to the point where we said, give yourself a chance and at least have some sort of preamp or something that gives you some EQ control or a bit of nice sounding. And there are many, many, many uh, options for that. Sorry. He's, why are you laughing at me? <laughs> Whenever you say many, 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 there's a there's a, there's a scene in um, ah oh, that there's old police police films where the 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 superintendent standing at the podium again with many, many, many and, well, and well, police academy police academy yeah yeah <laughs> so whenever you say that I see the I see the superintendent standing at the podium again. Many, 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 and isn't he being he is inappropriately yeah. treated by a yeah, young lady by a hen. So, yeah. it's all good. Um, oh, man. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Again, interested to see if this makes the edit. All right, yeah, yeah. anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Blue Oyster Bar, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Not being funny, though, that is the main... <laughs> that is the main inspiration behind the Shwangri-La design that's coming. Police Academy. Uh, no, the, the Blue, the Blue Oyster, Oyster Bar. Is that the Blue Oyster Bar? Is that where they're going? Yeah. Anyway, here we are. Making fun of all that. Uh, many, many, many. How many acoustic guitar players do you know who use an acoustic amplifier? You. One. I can't get my head around it. I can't get my head around it. Because Why wouldn't you use an acoustic guitar amplifier? Because uh, it's what you said before. It's, it's a functionary bit of kit. Yeah, it's it's a weird thing. I happily go and spend silly money on a valve amp for my telly, but it's a different thing. If you're not primarily, oh well, I, I mean, the crazy thing is when I look at the, the gigs I've done recently, I am primarily an acoustic guitar player. So <laughs> I know it's stupid for me not to have one of these. That's 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 my point, and and they are expensive, you know. So here you go. This is when I do an acoustic gig. This is my rig. This guitar. I've also come up with another theory. 
guitars hate being in their cases. Yeah, you told me that before. I'm not sure that I'm... This guitar had been in its case for about two weeks. I took it out of the case, and when I took it out, I went like this. <laughs> and it kind of went... Uh, okay. Left it in here for a few hours. We had a little knock last night. And it's like, oh, there we are. There's yeah, my yeah. guitar again. Anyway, Interesting. Um, okay. <laughs> Just need to turn it down a little bit in the old, uh, in the old job arch there. So this is... You're going straight into that. Yeah. That sounds unreal. Do you like that? That's an AER uh, Compact 60. That is insane. The bottom end that's putting out is crazy. Yeah, have a play. I'm just going to take a bit more level off that. I'm going to take a little bit more level off the mic. Man, that is unreal. Wow. So, when I use this, because this guitar has a passive pickup, I can be playing my rhythm stuff with it rolled off a bit. And it rolls off a load of treble. Front of house gets that. So the, this DI out from there. DI out on that. The um, sound engineer gets that, and there's no work to do. It's just there you go. Oh mate. And, and not only those. that, That's not awesome. not only that, but so I can sit there on stage and have a sound coming from behind me, which I'm familiar with because I'm predominantly an electric guitar player. Mm. And I can hear it, I can monitor myself. Not only that, that's got a microphone input on it so you can sing through it as well. It's a mini PA. And what a lot of, what, you, you look at that and you think that could never ever be any good because how big is it? That's incredible. And yet this is, this is more like hi-fi technology yeah, than, it is, okay. um, than it is guitar amp technology. Mm -hmm. In fact, we'll do that in a sec when we, when we play the Mesa. There's a little thing I want to do, just, just a, an experiment. Okay. So... That has got no tricky mids on it, no parametric mid-range. It's got bass, middle, and treble. It's got um, a couple of things on it which are, um, well, two, two EQ shapes. So there's this EQ shape. <laughs> Hear the guitars vibrating. Yeah. <laughs> it's got this EQ shape. So a lot more zingy, which you you might prefer for mm. certain for certain things. Reader 
that coming from that as well. Yeah. Man, that is... A bit more Tommy Emmanuel, that kind of sound. Yeah, 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 I yeah. personally prefer... <laughs> It's not bad, is That's it? That's extraordinary. So, once once I was lucky enough to get one of those, there was just... No going back. There was no going okay. back. I couldn't imagine doing... Um, you know, having an acoustic life where that didn't exist because, as I said before, with this plug straight into the PA, that, that pickup really requires some work. Which is not to say it's a bad pickup. Mm. It's to say that in order to get it to where I need it to be, and in order for it not to be invasive in the guitar, mm. in order for it to do what it does, no battery, all the rest of it, it needs work. Mm. It needs One of the things about those pickups, the the transducer that sits underneath, um, as opposed to the, pia the piezo, the piezo sits underneath the bridge and vibrates and takes energy. And there's an argument to say that that energy that the piezo is taking out isn't being transferred into the body of the guitar. You know, that's... It, that's a traditional bone nut sat on, you know, a rosewood thing, bridge, and sorry, ebony in that case, but yeah, ebony. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and I, I've heard people say it. Yeah. I've also heard people say that if it's fitted correctly, it's negligible. Right. Okay. The problem comes where it's not fitted very well, mm. and the bottom of the this causes two problems. The bottom of the saddle slot, if it's not perfectly flat, right, means a, the pickup doesn't sit on it properly, and this mm -hmm. goes for the bridge as well, which, mm -hmm. of course, the, the piezo element is sandwiched between the, the saddle and the bottom of the bridge. If both of those things aren't perfectly flat, then not only does it inhibit the resonance of the guitar, but the output of the pickup will be odd. Yeah, of course. And so, out of balance and yeah, stuff. Okay. Yeah. Pluses and minuses. Right. Yeah, okay. I, I want to move on to this, which is new from Mesa Boogie. Our friends in Petaluma, and I was interested in this because anything that comes out new from Mesa, they don't mess about. Mesa Boogie does not mess about. Big. And uh, it was really surprising when they went into the acoustic guitar market. And as a sometime fan of acoustic guitar amps, I thought, I really want to hear this. So... I wonder what valve acoustic guitar amps are. No, 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 no valves. Apparently they've, they've spent a lot of time looking at the front end. It's like a really nice studio type FET front end. A um, bunch of other stuff. Two bands of parametric mid. You can check out the specs on the on the Boogie website, um, and it has some inbuilt stuff. But let's use this to talk about some concepts. Okay, give us a play, Dan. <laughs> Can I hear the difference between the under saddle and the, mm -hmm. the mic? So, mic. Under saddle. Isn't it interesting? Because plugged directly into the PA, there was so much zing and stuff from the under saddle, but now I'm thinking, actually, I need a good bit of that in this. That's the mic.
What a difference having something like that behind you. What I was playing with there is there's two bands of parametric EQ. Mm -hmm. So if you would just, can you just strum an E chord briefly? I'll do, there's one lower and one higher and I'll just show you the effects of a parametric EQ. Parametric EQ is it takes a band of frequencies and it either boosts them or cuts them. And you have two controls. You have one that is the boost and the cut and you have one that selects the frequencies. Mm -hmm. What I'll do is I will cut the frequencies and I'll show you how that is affected across. Okay. That's so cool. What hopefully that shows is on most like cheap to, well, on some cheap mi mixing desks, you don't have any parametric mid. On most mid range mixing desks, you get one band of parametric mm. mid, and on good mixers, you get at least two. On acoustic guitar amps, you might get one band of parametric mid. Mm. On some, you get two, and it just shows you how much scope there is just to sculpt that because normally one of the big problems with making an acoustic guitar pickup sound good is finding that frequency at which it is harsh and cutting it right it's usually that rather than boosting the issue that i have with that is sometimes that's the frequency that you need especially when i'm playing with drums yeah sometimes that's the frequency to that cut you need. through yeah and, then, and there you go because so each each um environment differs so mm. that beautifully balanced finger style sound you have mic'd with the acoustic guitar in the studio for your, you know, ninth album, I'm going to do an acoustic fingerstyle album. Um, that's not going to work in a band. Mm. And that's what you're saying. Mm. That's, that, that is, again, in defense of the, of the undersaddle pickup. Yeah, yeah. Blowing fly. It likes boobies as well. Go on. Go away. Have a better life somewhere else. Um, yeah. So to, to finish off, I'm going to do two things. Yep. Let's do two things. One is I want you to play through that and I'm going to bring you up through the PA as well. Okay. So Let, you've got a DI out of the amplifier and that's going straight into the PA. Correct. That we bought by mistake. That we bought by mistake. Okay. It was just that, oh, kind of interesting. Oh dear. <laughs> Okay.
that's days and days and days. Just of fun. a different experience, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, man. It's nice. That's and so it, like, cool. You know, major key. Oh, we're so nice. <laughs> uh, right, finally, 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 in this segment, finally, 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 in this segment, um, why shouldn't you plug straight into the PA? You can if you want. But you know what? Give yourself a better chance. Give yourself some control over that. Number two. Why on earth would you use an acoustic guitar amplifier? Hopefully we've proved that. Number three, and finally, and the question that um, I tend to get asked a lot whenever I'm extolling the virtues of acoustic guitar amplifiers. Why can't you just plug your electric guitar, or your acoustic guitar, into your electric guitar amp? Mm -hmm. So, play, Dan. We're back to hearing the... Uh, I actually haven't even said its name, the Rosette 300. Okay. You've heard it a lot already, so we shouldn't need to do too many reference tones. What I'm going to do now is quickly turn on the Mesa Lone Star, which is an electric guitar amplifier, plug down into that and just see how good uh, an acoustic guitar sound we can get out of that. Okay. And, yep. you know, how interesting that is. All right. Mm -hmm. Sounds like, a, sounds like an acoustic guitar plugged into an electric amplifier. It's not unusable, is it? No. Simon's probably going to say it's the best sound he's heard all day. No, okay, he's shaking his head. I, <laughs> Simon doesn't doesn't like that kind of very Nashville type fidelity okay. thing. New strings, yeah, it's not not your thing, is it? You like a warmer thing, which a lot of people really do. Mm. That might suit someone who likes that warmer. But you know, That's I've it. got all the mid range scooped out. Yeah. I've got the bass and the treble rolled on. I've got loads of presence rolled on. The fact is, an electric guitar amp just does not have the EQ. Yeah. It, but that sound, though, like, you've got to see the Pixies. Frank Black takes his, his Martin, plugs it straight into an AC30, People do cranks it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a sound. It's a sound. It's a sound. Exactly. But it's not that acoustic guitar it's, sound. It doesn't sound like an acoustic. But loud. It sounds like an acoustic plugged into an electric amp turned up. Once again, it'll be fascinating to hear the audio back. There you go. But could well be the best sound we've had of the day. But. <laughs> So there we go. Okay, how long have we been running, Simon? Is that enough for part one? Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> um, part one. Part two, we're going to do straight after this, which is going to be a look at pedals in more detail. Um, so there you go. Acoustic guitars, plugging in, the complications thereof, a couple of fascinating ways around it that may help you. Post your questions below because I'm quite certain this is a topic we will return to with any luck. Yeah. And I, I think even though we're all so passionate about electrics and that stuff, you know, when we think about actually the, the amount of time we spend playing acoustics we get for lots of this, it's a subject worth going deep on. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, totally. Good. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, massive thank you to our patrons and Patreon. Uh, thank you so much for your support, guys. You are hammer legends, every single one of you. Um, massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Anderson's Music of Guildford, Surrey. Hello, gentlemen, and the and ladies, and, and hello to the guys in USA. Riff City Guitar of New Hope, Minnesota, somewhere else, and Sioux Falls. And I don't know if I pronounced that right. It's, anyway, uh, it, their new store. They now have three stores. And Sioux it's Falls. In Sioux Falls. Is it S-I-O-U-X? Yeah. 
Awesome. Pretty sure. Can we go there, please? Yeah, let's go there. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and uh, to our mates in Brisbane. Uh, Panel Empire, Matt and the gang down there. Hello. In Australia, by yes. the way. Yes. Um, finally, if... Uh... If you need an acoustic guitar-themed T-shirt <laughs> in brown, <laughs> uh, you can go to that pedal show store. And uh, if you want to be purchasing... Playing one. your acoustic guitar with a Attitude Rebel. Yeah. You know. There you go. Yeah. In grey. Great. Um, what else? Sorry about the Chris Buck 360p. Everything that I want to say about YouTube, I'm not going to say because without YouTube, we can't publish any videos. Yes. So we'll see you next week. Thank you, YouTube. Yeah, see you next week, guys. Cheers. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.